Yo, what's going on, everyone? Tom here, and welcome back to the Notorious EDC podcast. Um, I really apologize for missing a week of uploading. I just uh, just didn't have the time. And between my photo career and getting beer bombs in and the knife prototypes and just regular life stuff, I just didn't want to make a shitty episode just to upload something for the sake of uploading. So I hope you understand and appreciate that. However, I'm back and um, I'm ready to rock and roll. Unfortunately, I realize like there's going to be times when life gets a little hectic and something's got to give, you know, and the podcast might just have to be that thing occasionally. So I'm going to do my best to stick with the once a week. But, you know, I hope you guys understand if occasionally I uh, I miss one. So, you know, we're all human. But anyway, um, I'm back and I'm really excited. I have so much to talk about in terms of, you know, the pocket knife coming in and, and the prototypes and all that stuff. So let's, uh, let's just dive into what's been going on yesterday. I actually got stuck in a bathroom at work because we ran a cable for one of the lights from the bathroom. We were shooting on location, so we didn't really have like a lot of options for power and stuff. So we just kind of made it work, but we ran a power cable under the bathroom door and, uh, yeah, that didn't really work out so well because when I closed the door, I immediately felt it like lodge shut. And I was like, ooh, that was like a really strong close. I was like, hmm, let's see if that's going to be a problem for me. And sure enough, when uh, when I went to leave the bathroom, the door was completely stuck shut and I just couldn't open it. I, I was pulling on the handle and I saw the handle was going to rip off because the door felt so flimsy. And it had a lot of windows, which was making me nervous because I obviously didn't want to break all the glass. So I thought, let me try and get this uh, cable out of the door. And it was I mean, it was in there. There was no there's no getting it out. So I was like, wow, this really (laughs) this is really quite the predicament because I don't know what to do. Like, do I have to break a window? But I thought, you know what? I didn't have anything in my pockets because all I had was a pocket knife. I didn't have any of my, you know, my usual EDC gear in my pocket because it was in my backpack. But my buddy Joe Leonard was with me. Shout out to Joe and check out his uh, his his bags and pouches at BQE Bags. Um, Joe was with me on the shoot, and Joe knows the deal. So I was like, Yo, Joe, go in my backpack and grab <laughs> grab my pouch. I have a you know a Lynch pry bar in there or whatever. And he actually has one as well. So he ended up what I thought was giving me mine, but he gave me his because we both had black ones that day. Yeah. So he passed me the pry bar like through the top of the door because you could like open the door (laughs) a little bit from the top part. But the bottom is what was stuck. So I was like, damn, maybe I got to take the hinges off. So I was trying to wedge the hinges up and then that wasn't working because they were just they're like caked in there. It was a mess. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to try to pry the whole door open. And obviously the AAP 2.5 is very short. So I didn't know how much leverage I was going to get. I really needed an in without knocking. Shout out to Casey making all these options, but I just, um, I I never thought I would have needed an in without knocking until I got stuck in a fucking bathroom. So, you know, whatever, it was fine. I ended up getting down to the bottom of the door with the pry bar. I just kind of you know, wedged it in there and I just gave it one good like push and it honestly just kind of popped right open. So what a relief that was because I wasn't, I mean, I'm a little bit claustrophobic, but I knew that it was going to be okay. It was more just like we didn't have time to have me just be locked in the fucking bathroom all day. I had to get back to work. So whatever, I got out, it was fine. And we had a little laugh about it, but, um, shout out to the pry bar. I mean, yet another use when, uh, when you poorly place a cable and it ends up, you know, the things you love end up hurting you the most. Sometimes you end up just getting stuck in a bathroom. So it's all good. We got it done. And that is that. And by the way, the other day I got a nice little package at my studio. I went to pick up um, some mail and stuff and I saw a pretty good sized box from Tim Reeve. And I was like, oh shit, maybe he sent me a t-shirt or something. I totally forgot that we talked after we got off the air, uh, off the air. What am I, what, what do I have a fucking radio show? You know what I mean? Once, once we stopped recording the podcast, um, we were just chatting a little bit about the, uh, one of one Nundi and some other knives and stuff. And 
he just he sent me like tim sent me like five knives to check out and they're so fucking cool and i'm just like super excited to take a better look at them this weekend when i have some time but there was two nundies one of them was uh standard wood and satin blade and i have to ask him what the you know what the history of that one is and why he sent that maybe it was the old nail nick or something like that that we were talking about and then the other Mnundi was the one of one that we were chatting about, which has the stone wash blade and the micarta overlay. And oh my God, guys, I tried to bribe him. I tried to ask him to sell that one. I tried to ask him to make me another one. And he just, uh, he just won't budge. He's being very unreasonable. And, you know, I just, I don't think I have a chance of getting one, which is very sad, but I'm excited to hang on to this one for like a week or whatever, and just, you know, just enjoy it and just check it out, get some cool shots of it. And, uh, I just, I'm just really pumped that he sent those over. Thank you, Tim. It was a pleasure chatting with you on the podcast. And I think a lot of people enjoyed that episode. I definitely want to do more of that and have some awesome makers lined up for more episodes. So I'm really excited to get that going. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just pumped to check out these, you know, these knives. One of the knives that he sent was uh, one of the unique graphics Sabenzas, and it is like the smoothest knife you've ever opened or closed in your life. And for it to be on washers and not bearings, it just when people talk about if you guys have never handled a Chris Reeve knife, a lot of people will tell you it's got this hydraulic finish. This is like what I've always described as it's like two pieces of glass with oil in between. It just moves so smooth. It's just a uh, chef's kiss. You know what I mean? It's just really nice. But, um, what else I picked up? Oh yeah. I picked up one of my new knives yet again. <laughs> God, another new knife. I got a knife from Joseph Vero from Vero engineering. I got a neuron and it is the all stone washed version and it is absolutely sexual it's fucking fantastic shout out to joseph joseph has been by the way joseph has been such an amazing friend answering my questions my business questions and my logistical questions and stuff like that and just helping me navigate this crazy knife manufacturing process and i just really really appreciate him just being such an awesome friend and just you know never hesitating to help and just share his knowledge and and of course ultimately his time which is the only thing you know that none of us can buy more of so to me the ultimate sign of respect is someone giving you their time so i really appreciate you joseph thank you so much and the knife is fucking sick if you guys haven't seen the the neuron it's a double detent knife it's uh it's a little bit less than three inches but it carries like a little bit bigger because it's kind of like a taller if you will kind of taller knife and it just feels so good in your hand and it just ah, it's just so good you have to check it out i don't know if he's got any available or if he will soon but just go to his instagram page check out the facebook group sign up for his mailing list do all the things and get yourself a vero knife in your collection immediately you won't regret it shout out to joseph um what else is going on Oh yeah, no big deal. Just got my knife prototypes in the mail. So, <laughs> so I'm super excited, and I got like almost all the beer bombs in for the next uh, the next batch of drops. I'm just waiting on black PVD and OD green micarta. But yeah, I got a bunch of flavors in, so I got to QC those. It's gonna be a lot of work, but I'm gonna get it done, and you know, just excited to get those in the world the big papas are sweet i did one drop of the uh stone washed ones so far that went really well everyone already got them usps i don't know they're they're all over the place this past couple of weeks they have been crushing it everything's been arriving like suspiciously fast i want to say because if i'm sending something first class it usually takes a little while but people have been getting stuff in like two days so i don't know what's going on over there but i hope it <laughs> continues like this because this is like a best case scenario so that's very exciting but yeah so the prototype of the knife came in and i wanted to talk a little bit about it in terms of like the design and the specs you can see on, um, you know, you can see more on my website and all that stuff. Like if you click on the little hamburger icon, as they call it, or the drawer, whatever you prefer. 
Um, on the top left of my website, you can click on Kingpin and you'll see some pictures and the specs. And it's kind of like a basic section I just built out so people can just have an easy reference point. But I need to take more pictures, obviously. I need to add a logo in Photoshop because the prototypes don't have logos on them. But you can get a good sense of what they look like, um, all the specs, all that stuff. But yeah, anyway, I want to explain kind of how I came up with the design and all that stuff. So I'd like to get into that now. You know, for the most part, this is a modern traditional knife. And what I mean by that is it's basically a traditional pattern in terms of the gun stock, but I tweaked it a little bit because the gun stock, I always, I don't know, something about it always drew me to it, but ultimately, I never really like the flat bottom part. And if you guys Google it, you can see what I mean. But yeah, I just added a finger groove on that flat part towards the bottom of the knife. And I just think it flows so much better. And and just for me, you know what I mean? Obviously, it's a classic pattern. I'm not trying to say I improved on it, but I, you know, to me, it just is more visually pleasing for what I like. And then I Obviously, it's a more modern construction. It's all titanium and it's all screwed together instead of pinned. The blade has just this really nice, aggressive looking harpoon style, which I think also adds to the modern vibe of it. It's got a really nice hollow grind on it. It's really thin behind the edge. The blade stock is three millimeters and down by the tip, it's 0.83 millimeters. So it's got amazing slicing ability. I'm very, very excited about this knife. I've, and I apologize because I'm going to say the word excited like literally a hundred times on this podcast. So I, you know, I apologize in advance. But yeah, I have a fuller on here instead of a nail nick, which is also a little bit more of a modern kind of a vibe. And the fact that the fuller is on both sides of the blade means it's very easy to pinch open. It's ambidextrous. It's very symmetrical. It's like the same thing on both sides. So to me, that adds to the just the design aspect of it. There's also a lanyard hole in the back, so you can put a lanyard on there and help get it out of your pocket or get it out of a slip or add your favorite lanyard beads, stuff like that. And there's going to be three versions that I want to start with initially. It's going to be uh, the full titanium version, a titanium with black micarta and a titanium with OD micarta. So a little bit about each of the three flavors, if you will. The full titanium version is going to be a very heavy, dark stone wash. It's just going to be like a really matte looking knife, which is really cool because it just stone wash just always looks good. And I really like that dark stone wash. It just looks so badass. So that's one uh, that's one of the looks. And by the way, that version is going to have milled out handles to reduce weight. So it's almost it's crazy. These are almost the same weight when the micarta ones basically have so much material removed for the overlays. So the full titanium version weighs 2.26 ounces and the micarta version weighs 2.2 ounces. So it's pretty much identical, which is awesome. And anytime I think you can reduce the weight of a knife in a way that doesn't impede its functionality, I think it's kind of nice because I don't know, we always carry so much shit with us and it's just <laughs> nice to not have dead weight for no reason. But to me, the knife still feels really balanced and it doesn't feel like you know, it doesn't feel off balance. Like some knives, like, I don't know if there's a knife with FRN scales or something like that. The blade sometimes is much heavier than the handle and it feels like it's going to fall out of your hand. You know what I mean? It just doesn't feel goofy like that. It just feels like still feels really good. So, and then the black version is all black PVD blade, stone washed, the titanium bolsters, and obviously the handles are titanium so that's all pvd the uh the end stone washed the black micarta looks so good with it all the hardware matches on all these so on the stone washed ti version the screws are stone washed the pivot stone washed on the the black one the screws are black on the od and uh, excuse me, on the titanium and OD version, the screws are a little bit more of a satin look, so it matches with the knife better. And yeah, on that version, the uh, the satin belt grind just looks so, so nice. You can really see that hollow grind. It pops really well. And the bolsters just look awesome. The green micarta just looks so nice. I'm just super excited again for the, for the thousandth time. 
I just love the way they came out. I am just thrilled to get this design in the world. And the feedback from you guys has been unbelievable. And I'm just really grateful for everybody that reached out to me, uh, commented, liked, DM, texted, everything. Like all the, the outpouring of support has been amazing. Even if it was just pressing like on my, you know, my reveal post or whatever, just to say that you saw it and you thought it was cool. Like that just means so much to me to take time out of your day and just tell me that you think this design is cool. So I really appreciate it. I'm just, you know, again, very excited to get it in the world and, and I can't get these designs in hand fast enough. So I'm basically just going to be counting down the days until these knives show up. So I'm going to just try and keep you guys posted on all the ordering info and all that stuff. And it's just going to be fantastic. But another thing I wanted to talk about was the name, which is really important to me. So the name of the knife is the Kingpin. And the reason why I named it the Kingpin is after my buddy, Chris Reeder, his nickname is Kingpin and uh, on Instagram. And basically me and Chris met in pretty shitty circumstances. We had a mutual friend that was in the ICU and we both went to visit on the same day and that's where we met. So unfortunately our buddy Todd uh, passed away and that's kind of how me and Chris met in the first place. And we just hit it off immediately and we just, you know, we just kept in touch and we had so much in common, obviously, with the knife hobby and just other stuff in life and just what we, you know, what we believe in as people and importance of family and stuff like that. And we ended up going to a few knife shows together and traveling a little bit and just having a great time. And, you know, he, he really became kind of like my chosen dad. And I went to him for a lot of advice over the years and he's just always had my back. He's always been there for me. He taught me a lot about custom knives. Todd was actually the first one to show me a custom slip joint. And Chris kind of, you know, kept that going and showed me the ropes about what to look for and all that stuff in the, in the custom world. So it was just amazing how our friendship kind of just developed over the years. And, you know, it's hard to make friends as an adult and it's even harder to make friends that you're super close with as an adult. So it's just been a, an absolute blessing to have Chris in my life. And I'm really big on giving people their flowers while they can still smell them. So, so I wanted to name the knife, the Kingpin to, honor him in that way because he does mean so much to me as a person and as a friend and you know he's just been an awesome friend over the years so i just really wanted to show him that respect and also the name is fucking gangster so i really uh i really like the name of the knife and shout out to chris he's an awesome guy give him a follow on instagram and he's got a lot of uh he's got a lot of the coolest shit you'll see on instagram he's not super active on there but when he posts he makes it count. So definitely check him out on there. I'll put his Instagram in the show notes. So check him out and give him a follow. He's the best. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. I'm just hyped up for the knives. I got a lot of QCing to do. And this was uh, just a little quick update for you guys. Again, I have a bunch of makers lined up to do more episodes and I'm going to be popping on to do like a little check in. So I don't know if it's going to be like every other week will be a maker and then every other week will be me checking in. But we're going to see how it goes. I'm just going to keep playing it by ear and do the best I can. Life's a little bit hectic right now. So I'm just trying to make sure I put out quality quality stuff and I don't waste your guys time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I will be back in a week or so with a fresh one for you and I'll keep you posted. So hope you have a great rest of your week and I will catch you soon. Peace.